what do you guys even want me to say? Like, there's few things I can even say about this game, okay? The Chicago Bears lost to the Minnesota Vikings by a score of 19-13 to at Soldier Field on Monday Night Football, giving Kirk Cousins his first Monday Night Football win of his entire career and losing in embarrassing fashion again as our offense has probably the worst <laughs> offensive performance that I have ever seen. And you know what the funny thing is? I said that exact same thing last week. I said that exact same shit a week ago. And we found out a way to get even worse. The Chicago Bears offense only put up 149 total yards in a 60-minute football game. They put up 150 yards in a 60 minute football game the only points they scored were because of special teams okay Cordero Patterson had a fantastic kickoff return which is probably the most hype I've gotten in a long time for the Chicago Bears man salute to Cordero Patterson man because he put the team on his back early in this game he was also helping out in the run game and also in the passing attack and he was just all over the field making plays for us and then he had that huge kickoff return which I got a huge amount of respect for Cordero Patterson because he did everything he was asked to do at a high level. There's really few plays that he didn't do well on, okay? He gave his full effort on every single run. He was breaking some decent runs through, okay? The blocking was a lot better in that first quarter. So Cordero Patterson did have 12 carries for 30 yards, which you would think, oh, it's only 30 yards. Okay, obviously 30 yards, not that much, but he had a few good runs when the blocking was there and he was also helping out um i think he caught a couple balls maybe only one but he did catch at least one ball i remember um for a first down so really amazing stuff by Cordero patterson but <laughs> i think it all stops right there okay i can't name a single other person on the chicago bears offense that had a good game okay let me start at the top with the quarterback man first of all okay also before i say anything else um Prayers go out to Nick Foles, okay? I sincerely hope he's okay, that he's going to be fully healthy and fine because that looked like a scary hit he took late in that game and he got carted off. So I sincerely hope he's okay because no matter if you like Nick Foles or you don't like Nick Foles, he's a member of the Chicago Bears and he is also a human being as well. I care about the health of all our players and also, you know, other human beings too. So just from a human to another human, I really hope he's okay and he's fine. But that did look scary. So we'll hope Nick Foles is all fine and well. But looking at him... As a football player in this game, man, Nick Foles had a terrible day, okay, from beginning to end. And guys, at this point, what excuse do you guys want to give him, okay? At the beginning of this game, the blocking was completely there, okay? In the first half, the blocking was actually pretty tremendous in certain stretches um, of that half. And Nick Foles had ample opportunities to score touchdowns, okay? He had a wide open touchdown to, uh, was it, yeah, Jimmy Graham on that back shoulder throw that he just threw out of bounds, okay? That was a bad decision, bad throw by Nick Foles. The interception he threw also, a lot of it was on him, okay? I know a lot of people online were blaming Anthony Miller for, um, you know, not catching that, not coming down with that, which I guess I do understand to some extent because if you are a receiver in this league, you got to be able to make plays like that and time your jump a little bit better. But guys, Anthony Miller was wide open. The pocket was completely clean. Nick Foles had ample time to throw that ball and he still sailed it above Anthony Miller's head. So, like, where's this accuracy that we were promised from Nick Foles with a clean pocket even, okay? He had a clean pocket at the beginning of this game. Yes, it did get worse as the game progressed, okay? He didn't have much of a clean pocket in the second half. And also the play calling did get a lot worse in the second half, which I'll talk about later. But he did not convert on the opportunities he actually had in this game which is something you have to do in the nfl because you get so few opportunities to make plays in this league i mean the nfl is a game of inches football is a game of inches and nick Foles cannot convert on these inches so it was just from start to finish just such a terrible day from nick Foles. okay if i read his stats he had 106 uh passing yards uh 15 for 26 on his passing attempts zero touchdowns one interception a pass rating of 51 he took two sacks uh 16 yard loss on those so just if i look at his stat line only that was pretty bad but if you do look at his play as well if you look at the film there were so many missed opportunities he had in this game okay he had the chance to get the game winning touchdown to anthony miller 
in that fourth quarter on fourth down, but that was a little bit off, okay? Again, football is a game of inches. If you mess these inches up, you're not going to make the play. Obviously, Anthony Miller, maybe he could have caught that ball. Uh, maybe a better receiver would have caught that ball, but you got to give your receiver a better ball in this situation if you want to be a good quarterback in this league, okay? All the top quarterbacks in this league, they make that throw, and that's kind of what we're missing on the Spears offense, okay? I'm, I mean, I'm also not expecting Nick Foles to be a top quarterback at all, okay? Obviously, he's not going to be Patrick Mahomes, you know, Aaron Rodgers, uh, Tom Brady is not going to be close to the best quarterbacks in the game, but I'm just expecting at least average level QB play from him. But today we got bottom of the league QB play, okay? He was about as bad as you can possibly get today. I can't even name many big throws, many good throws he had in this game at all, even when the protection was there in that first half. So I totally get that maybe all the factors around him are not the best, okay? He doesn't have great coaching, great play calling, not the best of the best receivers. Our O-line did get worse as the game progressed, but he's not even an average quarterback when all the factors around him were working. So I don't know what to think about Nick Foles right now at all, okay? Before I was making at least some excuses for him, okay? Maybe before the blocking was not there, the play calling was horrendous, but it, today when those factors were there, he still wasn't a good quarterback. So, I mean, as of right now, guys, in my honest opinion, you got to put Mitch Trubisky back in, okay? I know the season is most likely, like, we have a very, very small percentage chance now of doing anything this year. It's most likely going to end up with us missing the playoffs. But if we want to have a little bit of fun, put Mitch back in, okay? Regardless of the health of Nick Foles after the bye, just put Mitch Trubisky back in just for fun. And I also, I mean, besides the fun too, I feel like he honestly right now probably gives us a better chance of winning these football games with how bad our offensive line is at some points in time. At least Mitch Trubisky can pick up the first down with his legs, okay? We are really missing the mobility of Trubisky in these last couple games because especially in this game, there were so many times where a quarterback like Mitch, he would have easily picked up that first down and Foles could not because he's slower than my 73-year-old grandpa. So no disrespect to Foles, man. He's obviously a pocket passer. He's not a mobile guy, but he just does not fit right now the Chicago Bears, and he's not playing that well either as a pocket passer. Now, I'm not going to say that Mitch Trubisky is going to magically make our offense that much better. That's obviously not going to happen, but I'm just saying for fun's sake, why not put Mitch Trubisky back in, okay? At least I have a little bit more fun watching him on Sundays because of his runs, because of his personality as well okay i just i'm sorry guys i cannot connect as well to an outside quarterback as i can with mitch trubisky even though i know mitch trubisky is most likely going to be gone after this year okay i don't see any way in which the bears really keep mitch after this year it would still be fun just to watch him pick up some first downs with his legs you know maybe mess around and beat the packers on sunday night football <coughs> but uh, all jokes aside guys i mean this season is most likely gonna be a wash I'm, I'm one of the most optimistic fans out there i mean you guys know me okay i'm probably a little bit too optimistic most of the time but i really can't find many positive things to take away after this loss okay after a fourth straight loss in which we're falling behind further and further in playoff talk and at this point unless we pretty much win out the rest of the season or maybe only lose one game the rest of the season we're not gonna go to the playoffs so at this point why not just just put Mitch back in, okay? If you want to give him a chance at that miracle run, okay, to give him a chance to win out the rest of the season and prove that he, he was actually our franchise quarterback to live out that fairy tale ending, why not put Mitch back in, okay? It's most likely obviously not going to happen, but you won't lose anything at this point with trying. So that's my two cents, guys. Our offense was about as bad as it can possibly get. We had no momentum in this game at all. Did not get into the end zone even once. We only scored six offensive points against one of the worst defenses in the NFL. So I don't even know how much worse you can get. That's probably as bad as it can possibly get. We are officially the worst offense in the entire National Football League. Mad Nagy, guys, I don't see why he should have a job at the end of this year, okay? Unless we somehow make that miracle, miraculous run to make the playoffs, there is no reason why Mad Nagy should have a job with us, okay? What has he improved with us over the past three years? He had one good season, and even that was due to mostly defensive dominance. So I've defended Mad Nagy so much on this channel over the past like year and a half at certain times, but at this point, 
I'm out of excuses, okay? I cannot find a single way to defend Matt Nagy after these losses continue piling up. And Ryan Pace as well, okay? I'm not gonna forget about my boy Ryan Pace, okay? Although you have built up this phenomenal world-class defense, you also built up the worst offense in the NFL, okay? You pay no attention to your offensive line. Your quarterback selections obviously have not been the best, uh, to put it lightly. So at what point are we also gonna start hounding on Ryan Pace, okay, to bring in a new GM as well, okay? Maybe I'm talking crazy talk right now. I'm saying to clear house, but I don't think I am, guys. I think a lot of people in the comments would disagree, would, sorry, agree with me because at this point, it's been so many years without a single playoff win. That is unacceptable, man. We are loyal, diehard fans and we get the same thing every single year. I was so hyped up for this year. I, I actually thought we could potentially make a run after that 5-1 and one start, but the Chicago Bears keep on being the Chicago Bears. They keep on breaking my heart and letting me down. So that pretty much wraps up my video. Notice how I didn't spend a single second talking about the Bears defense because they don't deserve to be even mentioned in the same video as the Chicago Bears offense. That is disrespectful to this world-class phenomenal defense, okay? All across the board, they played lights out for the majority of this game, okay? They held Dalvin Cook in check for the majority of this game until our offense kept them on the field for way too long. Um, they turned the ball over two times, okay? Khalil Mack had an interception. That was so crazy, so hype. And Danny Trevathan forced that fumble as well, but none of it mattered because our offense sucks so bad. Let me know what you guys think about this loss in the comments down below. This loss really sucks. I gotta stop taking sports so personally because man, <laughs> Losses like this really break my heart, but as always, guys, bear down.